Hey, down here. Okay, so we're booting up the AS Rock to the um, easy to boot um, system, multi boot system with. Oh, dang damn it, I'm talking and not thinking. Okay, so it went straight to Sardu. I have the Sardu. I have Sardu on this USB stick, but I also have the helper application or files, really. I guess there might be one of them that's an application that uh, is making this, uh, that will make it boot. Well, it won't make, it doesn't make it boot to the other deal. Uh, it'll boot to the e easy to boot, but uh, it, it's help, it makes it work to install Windows 7, is what it does. But you've got to get the system to re recognize the other, the uh, easy to boot on the SD card and the USB adapter, and it always wants to recognize this. Uh, USB flash drive first, so uh, that's what I got to do here to get it working. And uh, trying to hold still, I'm using the can uh, the phone in the uh, tripod, and it's actually so it's it's kind of sitting on me. And every time I move, talk, it uh, moves. Let me see if I can <coughs> readjust things somehow. Maybe I can make it a little better. It's actually easier just to hold a phone still than to do this, but the other phone was run out of out of space, and I don't have this the system that I'm gonna I'm trying to recover from viruses. I'm actually gonna install Windows 7 on a 30 gig hard drive and the 250 gig hard drive. I'm just gonna use this backup for my phone <laughs> videos. So uh, and I'm gonna delete all the Windows 7 files off that 250 gig hard drive. That's what got infected. I've got it all cleaned up, but I don't trust restoring or fixing the operating. It's broke. Uh, it won't boot. Uh, but I don't trust trying to fix it. I think more Trojans or whatever might come out. So I got to hit Control Alt Delete. Now this time I'm going to hit F11. I was planning on doing it, but once I started talking, I got sidetracked. So I'm just going to start now. Doesn't seem to bother this machine to start early. Some of them will start beeping at you if you start before you get to before it starts really getting that screen up. Okay, let's see if it recognized it. Yeah, it did. Last time, uh, I like to never got it to recognize that USB mass storage device. And the cruiser pattern is my <coughs> USB stick, and the mass storage device is my uh, SD card and the USB adapter. But the cruiser pattern, when you want to boot to it, I mean, like if you're trying to select it, then you got to got to guess or remember. I can't remember. It's either the top one or the bottom one. It always shows two because there's two. There's one little tiny partition on there with some Windows applications on it that came with it that you can't delete. I have no use for them, but you can't delete them. It won't let you. I tried all, everything. I, uh, all kinds of things. Departed and everything else. I don't remember what else I tried anymore, but can't get it off of there. So anyway, it's not a real bad thing. It's just something you don't really I don't really want so see I'm still got part of this thing sitting on me so when I'm breathing it's moving the phone okay let's see uh, <coughs> it's actually quite a bit heavier with this little tripod it's a metal tripod doesn't seem heavy until you hold it up with one hand for a while okay so I'm gonna go to Windows install no Windows moot boot Windows install is where you put. No, that is where I want to put it. Yeah, it's different. Fold the folders are actually named different, so it always throws me off. Because I pay attention to the folders when I copy where I copy the files over. You know more than I do the menu names. Okay, so I have five Windows Seven ISOs in here because I got three systems. Well, actually, I already think I've already changed my mind. I was going to restore them all, but I'm going to do this one most likely if I can. If I can get it to. Uh, I see, I don't want professional. This is Windows Home Premium. I want x86-64. If I can get the, if my license will work with the 64-bit, and I'm not quite sure, because the when eMachine CD here, DVD, that I have that came with it, <coughs> is a, it's 32-bit. So I don't know if that license will work or not. I'm just going to try it and see. And because uh, I downloaded the uh, these ISOs from the Microsoft website, I could use that DVD there to install it if I wanted to. I also been trying. I wanted to see how well this easy to boot works, and it's been really hard getting it to work. With you got a lot of fiddly things to do to get it to work. Uh, 
with these windows to the install. You can it would boot at first. I thought, oh great, because it booted right up to them. But then it uh, I got errors when I tried to run the install. So and now anyway, I won't go into it all again. But uh, just you'd have to do it uh, <laughs> if you're interested. You could go to that easy to boot website and uh, it's a uh, rmprepusb.com uh, or .org or whatever is what makes it. And it's easy to with the number two boot dot. They have two websites, easy to boot.com or org or whatever. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to hit enter and get it going. Now, there's your first welcome there. You could choose different options, but uh, you can leave. I can leave it alone here and let it do it. And it'll time out and uh, go on in. And uh, hopefully I won't get any of those errors. It's, what happens is that if you don't have this helper USB stick, it gives an error saying, looks like it's waiting on me still. Okay, I'm going to put the zero in there. Not sure why. I'm going to use the top menu, uh, use the easy to boot XML file. Okay, so now it says it's trying to boot it. Uh oh. I got that last time. I had this problem with this uh, ISO the first time I tried it. And then I went back into my backup server um, and I actually have it in two places because it used to be my machine I used every day. I had it in the regular downloads folder and then in a the backup folder. So I thought, well, let's see if there's anything wrong with that backup file. So I copied it over from my regular downloads folder. And then I made sure I ran. Uh, when you build this easy to boot, every time you change anything, you have to run uh, Make Files Contiguous, which is like a defrag app that they use to make everything work. And uh, defrags the files on your SD card or your USB stick. And then it worked. <coughs> so I thought, well, maybe that you know backup was bad or something but now I think it's just that I don't know if it's something odd in this the way this application works or if it's something odd in how it's interacting or, or not interacting properly with my SD card and the USB adapter because I've had some kind of strange anomalies I'll say if things working and they're not working so and I built it on my Fedora uh, I'm a Fedora 23 system in a WinXP virtual machine that's clean, you know, no viruses in that or anything, so it's not that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, inconsistent file system structure, so that that's telling me that the files aren't uh, contiguous, or they need defragging. Let me see, loading, no, 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 no. It makes you think that the ISO's bad, that's what it makes you think, that there's something wrong with it, there's some missing data on it, that's what. So. And it would probably boot. Last time I last time I booted it up, I did the same thing. So I went into my uh, home premium 32-bit, and it booted. But I have seen this same ISO. I actually deleted it. For, uh, but I forget why now. Oh, I didn't delete it. It uh, it mysteriously after I booted into it once the the, the 64-bit after actually it's, I remember after a hard shutdown. Uh, it all of a sudden shows up. It wouldn't boot, and then it, and it did this, and then it all of a sudden shows uh, it's um, as you know. So the file extension, uh, if a file's not completely downloaded when you're downloaded, it'll say dot part instead of dot iso or exe or whatever. And so it said dot part, and I got to look at the file size, and I was like, well, crap, some, some of the files missing. And I knew it wasn't before because it booted, and I always look, you know, when I'm uh, before I write copy files over that the file size is good, or when I'm done with the download or whatever. And uh, so, there's some tools in here. I'm gonna see if there's a file manager. Um, utilities. That might be where there might be like a just a simple file manager where I can look at that. If not, I'll have to go take it out and put it in my Fedora machine now this is not doing anything so I think it's locked up too probably won't do anything I hit control all delete and see oh it, it wasn't locked up it's rebooting but it's not going to do me any good I mean I could reboot into like a live Linux system or something and look at it but I'll just take it out and put it in my machine and if I had to get into a bunch more stuff I could even make a desktop video about it instead of holding this camera like this so oh, I'm gonna go now and uh, yeah, it's staying on Sardu. So I'm just gonna go here and uh, 
Let's see if I can get it to where it's going to boot into the 64-bit ISO like it did once. I know. I know it'll work. I've seen it work. All right, bye.